Hello and welcome to Evaluating Websites with CARP, presented by Daniel Bradford, the Los Osos High Library Teacher. That's me. What is this CARP? Well, CARP stands for Currency, Authority, Reliability, and Purpose. These are the four tests we can apply to evaluate whether or not websites are appropriate for research. Currency asks whether the information on the website is old or new. Authority asks whether or not the information on the website was created by experts. Reliability tests whether or not the website gives us all sides of the issue or just one side, and whether or not the website lists sources so that we can check its information. Purpose tests whether or not the website is trying to convince us of something or sell us something, whether it's an idea or a product. Let's look at each of these four tests and see how they can be applied to evaluate websites. Let's start with currency. Currency is just when was the website published? When was the information created? This publication information is usually found at the bottom of the web website page, but sometimes in other locations at the top or in the middle. And just remember that publication date and copyright date are the same thing for most websites. How old can a website be and still be useful for research? Well, that depends on the type of research you're doing. If you're researching a current event, you want a website that is very up to date, either something published today or in the last week. If you are researching in the field of science, then you want a website that is no more than three years old, and newer is always better. And the reason we need a very new website for science is because science is a very fast-moving field, and the information changes very quickly. History and literature sites can be older than three years because the information in those fields changes, but it doesn't change as quickly as it does in science. Here's a website with very good currency, ScienceDaily.com. I looked at the top of this website and I saw that it has a copyright date of the current year, which is 2014. And on the date that I accessed this website, it had an article published that day, Sunday, August 17th, 2014. This is a very up-to-date website with very new information, so it has very good currency. Here's a website with very bad currency, actually with zero currency. It's pinknoise.com. It's also a science website, but there's no date listed anywhere. I don't know when the information on this website was created, and I don't know if it's ever been updated. So this is a website that has very bad currency, zero currency. Authority. Authority just asks whether or not the people who created this website are experts. In other words, can we trust the information that they are providing to us? Some other good questions to ask when you're looking for the authority of a website is, is there a way to contact them so that you can point out mistakes or ask questions? And does the site have gatekeepers? In other words, editors or fact checkers who could discover mistakes independently and correct them. So here's an example of a website with very good authority, cbsnews.com. There's four things I like about cbsnews.com. First, they have a link to contact them so that you can point out mistakes or ask questions. The biographies of their news reporters make it clear that these people are experts in their field. The About CBS link shows that this is a respected news organization with a reputation that goes back many decades. And since this is a professional news site, it has gatekeepers, which are fact checkers and editors who could discover mistakes that the reporters might make and correct them. So, cbsnews.com has good authority. Here's a website with bad authority, vactruth.com. This is a website that tries to per, um, persuade people not to vaccinate their children. It's a very slick, professional looking website, but when I click on the About Us link, I see that the person behind the website is not a doctor and is not a scientist so he has no authority to make these claims and he makes that clear in his biography in other words he doesn't have the expertise that would be needed for this website so the website has bad authority moving on to reliability reliability is the most difficult of the four tests because you have to do some digging to find out whether or not the website is giving you all sides of the issue so the first time you look at a website, you may not realize that it has bad reliability. When you do research and use other websites, you may realize that the reliability is not there. So ask yourself questions when you're looking at a website. Are they telling you all sides of the issue, and are they providing sources for their information? 
If the answers to these questions are no, then the site is biased and does not have reliability. Just remember, the information they give you might be true, but it's not all of the information. They aren't telling you everything. Let's look at a website that has very good reliability. .gov sites are always a good source for reliable information. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA.gov, gives very reliable information on all of the topics that they cover. For example, they have an article on climate change that gives you all sides of the issues and also gives you independent links that you can check to see whether or not the information is correct. So it has a very high degree of reliability if you were doing research in climate change. And here's a website that has bad reliability, the American Enterprise Institute. At first, it sounds like it would be a good website. It's a private, nonpartisan, not-for-profit institution dedicated to research and education. That sounds really good. But when you look at their article on climate change, they actually have a low degree of reliability. I had to Google this to discover this, but what I Googled was American Enterprise Institute climate change bias. And when I did that, I discovered something. Back in 2007, the American Enterprise Institute offered scientists $10,000 in cash if they would publish a study that denies that climate change is happening. Why would they do this? Well, they're funded by ExxonMobil, which is one of the world's leading oil companies. ExxonMobil gave them $1.6 million to do this. ExxonMobil used to be one of the world's leading climate change deniers, but they've since changed their tune and they now admit that it is happening. But back in 2007, they were funding all kinds of efforts like this. And I found this out through an independent source, the Guardian newspaper, which is published in Great Britain. So the American Enterprise Institute on the issue of climate change has very bad reliability. They're not only just presenting one side of the issue, they are actually manufacturing information that is false. So they have bad reliability. Moving on to purpose. When we are looking at purpose, we're asking, is this website trying to sell me something? Are they trying to sell me a product? Are they trying to sell me an idea? If the answer to these questions is yes, then the site is biased. Once again, bias doesn't mean you can't use the information, but you will have to do extra work to verify it. I don't like to do extra work when I'm doing verification of websites. So if I see a website that has a bad purpose or bad reliability or bad anything, I pass by and I go to another website. Here's an example of a website with very good purpose, factcheck.org. Factcheck.org is a nonpartisan, nonprofit website that tries to educate voters about the issues. And it's not biased towards Democrats or Republicans because it doesn't take funding from either the Democratic or the Republican Party. All of its funding sources are nonpartisan, so it can tell you the truth on the issues and about the political parties. So this website has very good purpose to educate and to inform without any kind of partisan political bias. Here's an example of a website that has bad purpose, the Nuclear Energy Institute. It's a very slick, professional-looking website, but when you click on About NEI, they will tell you that they are trying to advocate for the spread of nuclear power, and the reason they do that is because they are funded by the nuclear power industry. The nuclear power industry can't make money if we don't build new nuclear plants. And so this website has a bad purpose. They're trying to sell you an idea, the idea of nuclear energy. They do have a lot of good information in here about nuclear energy, but it's biased. They leave out a lot of safety concerns, for example, or they try to minimize those safety concerns. So you would definitely have to check the information that they give you in here. And that's a lot of work. There are websites that will give you the facts without bias. So I wouldn't use a website that had an obvious bias like this one because it's just too much work and wastes a lot of research time. So now let's review. CARP, CARP, Currency Authority Reliability and Purpose. When we're using the currency test, we're asking, is this information new enough for me to use for my research? 
when we're using the authority test, we're asking, are these people experts? Do they know what they're talking about? When we're using the reliability test, we're asking, is this website giving me all sides of the issue or just one side? And are they giving me sources that I can use to check the information? When we're using the purpose test, we're asking, are these people trying to sell me something? Are they trying to sell me an idea? Are they trying to sell me a product? So when you use these four tests, currency, authority, reliability, and purpose, you will evaluate the website and determine whether or not it's something that you can rely upon as one of your research sources. This concludes our screencast. Thanks for watching.